The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Hello and welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. March 9th, next week, the tournament begins. We're going to have our two-hour special. We're going to have some special guests in, of course, as always. We're excited about that, but we're, but we're not excited about. Malik's Golden Grizzlies fell last week to Wright State. Malik, take it away. You want to know what a loser is? A team that... Man, oh man, oh man. Not just a team, multiple teams over the past 10 years that should have made the tournament and didn't. I haven't made the tournament since 2011. I went from Oakland to 2014, from 2014 to 2018. I saw three teams that should have made the tournament, and they all failed. The year after I graduated was the Kendrick Nunn team. They couldn't get it done. Last year, they make it all the way to the conference uh, tournament championship. They lose to Cleveland State, who was the last in the league the year before. They turn it all around and come back and make it to the tournament the very next year. And then this year... You bring in a pro talent in Jamal Kane. You're returning the leading uh, leader in assists in the country at point guard. You got a good veteran team with a few nice young players. And you lose five out of the last six games of the season. You struggle against IUPUI, who had five, five active players in the first game of the conference tournament. And then you play Wright State. They were up 48-36 to against Wright State. Wright State went on a 24-1 run. Greg Campy didn't call timeouts. He didn't substitute anybody. He basically stuck to what he's been doing for most of the season. Playing five or six players like 37 to 38 minutes. Running them into the ground. You get to about five minutes left in the game and they all fall apart. Greg Campy needs to go. Everything that that basketball program is needs to be reshaped, in my opinion. Because they're chokers and they're losers. And I, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. They 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 did it. This is the worst of the worst. You are up by 12, just like a few minutes into the second half. And you just... How do you as a head how do you just watch that happen, Joey? How do you just watch by the time by the time it was like 48 to 44, wouldn't you think you'd like to stop the bleeding mm-hmm. or make something happen, make a move, a substitution, odd something. S- something. You let it go from a 12-point lead to a tie and then a tie to a 12-point lead on the other side. Meanwhile, Jamal Cain fouls out. I, I'm 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 done with them. Maybe I'm done Camp, with them. Maybe Campy is in that same Izzo boat. In Oakland University, they're not going to fire him. They're not going to fire Greg Campy. Yeah, it's obvious at this point. Until he retires, this is just what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. The recruiting, I I don't understand what the recruiting strategy is. I'll, I. Besides him going for transfers that help them win every other year, I I can think of maybe four or five players over the past like six seven years that actually like could have helped them get to the tournament. 
and really like that could have done something for them once they got there. Mm-hmm. The rest of it has been mainly uh, impact from transfers outside of Cade Felder. Um, there are a few other guys I'm forgetting, but I'll, I'll just Travis Bader. See, he he was That's my era. That was yeah. That was he was on a team, he, one of the last teams that made the tournament in mm-hmm. 2011. So, I I don't I really don't even have much more to say. Yeah, it's, honestly, I I thought I would go off more, but I'm I'm more like deflated. It's been long enough. The yeah. irony of it all, yeah, not necessarily funny, but um, I went bowling this past weekend, and he's from he's from Oxford. I live in Oxford. He was at the bowling alley. I'm talking about Campy. No, Trey Townsend. Oh, Trey Townsend. Okay. Trey isn't – he's not one of the problems. He's good. No, he's he's played good. I'm just saying, like, th- their season could have been continuing, but, yet yeah, he's back at home, unfortunately. So, yeah, I wanted it's to – It's all let, Greg Campy's fault. <laughs> and I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but Wright State did go on, and they, they won the Horizon League. A really good championship game, too. It, it, yeah. They were going back and forth in the last minute. Mm-hmm. And Wright State pulled it out. Yeah. So – Wanted to give Malik that time to rant about his old team. Um, but we're going to save the rest of NCAA tournament preview stuff for next week. We are going to cover some conference tournament things uh, at the end of this show today. But in the last few days, there's been so much NFL news between the draft combine, crazy trades. We can't ignore it. We're going to ignore the NBA mostly today. Biggest and first, Russell Wilson is no longer a Seattle Seahawk. End of an era. One of Malik's favorite quarterbacks. Is he your favorite quarterback? My favorite. Yes, he's my favorite NFL quarterback. Okay. Um, yes. Russell Wilson got traded to the Broncos for a pretty hefty package. One of the biggest hauls in recent memory. Yeah, so the Broncos. Probably in NFL history. The Broncos are getting two first-round picks, two-thirds, or and two a, seconds. Yes. I think a, you said two seconds. And a fifth. And a fifth. Andrew Locke. Andrew Locke and Noah Fant. And Shelby Harris. And Shelby Harris, who was a defensive end. Uh, crazy. I, I didn't even know how to think of it, but the one thing that people kept bringing up, especially today now that everybody's had that full day to analyze, is that the AFC West now has possibly the greatest quarterback talent of any division in NFL, possibly in NFL history. There's usually two great quarterbacks in a division. Mm-hmm. Like Derek Carr yeah. is the worst quarterback in this division. And he's like the 11th best quarterback, maybe 10th right. in, in the NFL. Yeah. So you got... I feel bad for Derek Carr. I really do. Yeah. He was just get, starting to really get back on... Like, I, I saw, some, I like saw some Raiders fans saying, no disrespect to Derek Carr. But maybe it's time that we trade him and start a rebuild because they feel like they have no chance. I feel like they are right. <laughs> because they got but, so yeah. close last year, and now, you know, you have Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert. Now you have Russell Wilson, and then you guys have Derek Carr, which, again, he's still a great quarterback. But those other guys listed above are even better. Yeah. If I was the Raiders, I would trade Derek Carr to a contender, and I would start over because, yeah, this is just – it's too much. Yeah. I, I don't know the last time a team went into a, a off season, and just like that, everything went against their favor and went against the other team's favor mm-hmm. in their division. Like, it, it is really – it sucks for the Raiders. But this isn't about the Raiders. Yeah. It's more so about the Seahawks because yes. uh, the Broncos are looking pretty good right now. But, again, they are in a very tough division, so it is not going to be easy for them to just get out of here, just getting Russell Wilson. It's going to help them. Their receivers are going to love it. We mu- we finally may see if Jerry Judy's the real deal or not. They have Cortland Sutton as well. And I think more important than those, he's going to have a good old line and a very good defense for the first yes. time in years. Mm-hmm. It's It's been a good three or four years since Seattle had that. Right. He's going to a, a good young defense and a good old line. Yeah. He has the chance to compete again. And then there's Seattle. They're in a weird spot because obviously this means they have to be rebuilding. But this kind of messes up with Tyler Lockett 
I would uh, him and DK Metcalf. They both need to be traded or something. Yeah. I mean, you could keep DK, but for what? Who knows <laughs> when they're going to get a quarterback what? that can throw to him? Exactly. We don't. We don't even know what their strategy is going into the draft. Are they going to draft somebody right. along with keeping Drew Lock? Right. Because Drew Lock, we've seen like he's shown glimpses at Denver. Like he's looked pretty good, but then he's not looked very good at the same time. So. Yeah, it's it's kind of a risky move. Um, Noah Fant is a bit of an upgrade for them at tight end, but Gerald Everett has been fine. Um, we saw Rashad Penny go off at the end of last year, but is Chris Carson going to be healthy? Can they trade him? Like they're like, I don't know what Seattle's going to do. It's unfortunate for Seattle, but their time is over. Um, I think it happened today as well that they released Bobby Wagner. So the he was like the only remaining Legion of Boom, right? Yeah. So that whole sad times in Seattle. That whole sad area times. is just there may no longer be a twelfth man for a while. There are but there are I think there there still will. That for that uh fan base is rabid no matter what. Even in the times where they were just like competing for wild card spots. Yeah. But yeah, they at least they have the memories of a Super Bowl. Yeah. There are some fan bases that barely even have that. At least they have very recent memories of high level success. Right. So now they will have the ninth pick in the draft, which isn't bad. That's that's you can still get one of the better players in this draft. This draft is really deep, uh, so that'll be an interesting thing for them. But now the Broncos are back into that Peyton Manning era of you got to win now, and like we said before. When you're in the same division with Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert, that's betting a lot on Russell Wilson. Now, I'm not saying that he can't do it, but the AFC just keeps getting tougher and tougher and tougher. But I th- I think here's the difference with the Peyton Manning era. By the time they got Peyton Manning, he had a g- he had only a good three or four years left. Mm-hmm. The offense was very experienced and the defense was very experienced. You have a young building team that you just threw a very experienced high-level quarterback into. And I think we both agree that Russell Wilson has probably like over five years left. Mm-hmm. How how old is Russell Wilson? I <laughs> I mean, he was in college when... He was in college for four years. When I was, but he would have been a senior. So he's got to be like 33? He's not 33 yet. He's been in the league for eight years. He he was drafted in twenty. Was it eleven or twelve? He's thirty three. Oh, okay. Well, See, I just did my math because he was a senior when I was a freshman, and when I saw him play at Wisconsin, er, he played against Michigan State while playing for Wisconsin. So he would be four years older than me. Okay. Well, about he, even or five. even with him being thirty three, I feel like he he can play until forty. Yeah, I mean, or forty one. The way that quarterbacks are <laughs> going these days. I could, I don't. Yeah, he he doesn't have a long injury history. Peyton Manning came in with the neck injury, and it seemed like a swing, but it worked out great for them. Russell right. doesn't have a long injury history. He stays in amazing shape. He doesn't run around. He only runs around to make plays. He rarely runs around and gets hit. Yeah. So I think you have a good window of time and to figure all of this out. The other thing too is this team last year got to already start testing with Javante Williams. So even if they want to try to save Russell Wilson a little bit and not let him, quote-unquote, cook, they can run the ball with Javante Williams. And they still have Melvin Gordon. No, he's a free agent at the moment. Oh, okay. I didn't realize he was a free agent. So a lot of people are assuming that Javante Williams will be the guy and they might let Melvin Gordon go. But now with Russ, they might bring him back. It's, It's kind of unclear at the moment. I go Javante Williams. Yeah. Why? Why sign Melvin Gordon to a hot like? I bet he's gonna ask for a good amount of money. Yeah. You can look to put money into other things to put around Russell Wilson, honestly. Yeah. But again, I think the hardest thing though for me, and somebody brought it up, I think on the radio on my way in. If you list like the best quarterbacks in the AFC, you have this really long list. If you list the best quarterbacks in the NFC, Rogers, Rogers, and Kyler, Stafford, and Stafford, Dak, but it's yeah. like it drops off quickly. 
in the AFC, you have Mahomes, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow. Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson. Jo- you said Josh Allen already. Yeah. Like, there's just yeah so much more talent now. And now you have to add Russell Wilson to the list. Out of the top ten quarterbacks, you have, like, six mm-hmm. or seven from the AFC. Right. So, it, it's going to be tough. It, the AFC is no slouch these days. Um, but it, it it's interesting news, and it's exciting to see. Um, one other quarterback that we just mentioned, Aaron Rodgers, has decided that he is going to stay with the Packers. He's re-signing with them. At first, a lot of people said that it was a $200 million deal, $153 million guaranteed. Apparently, that's not true. He tweeted out saying differently. He said he hadn't signed a contract Yes, yet. which also Pat McAfee had told on his podcast that from their source that that wasn't the case, that it wasn't $200 million. So I don't, I'm not sure where that came from. $200 million would put him as the highest paid quarterback in the league, even above uh, Patrick Mahomes, just based on a yearly basis. Yeah. Uh, which would have been insane, and I, I thought it was crazy when I saw the Packers do it, but apparently that's not true. So we don't know the full details. I'm assuming that it has to be a favorable deal, I guess, because they want to be able to keep Devonte Adams. It sounds like they're they gonna just franchise to, tagged him. I was gonna say that it sounded like they were gonna franchise tag him. That is the case, so that they keep Aaron Rodgers and Devonte. A little bit longer. So that's interesting because it kind of sort of kind of messes up with the Lions path to rebuild because there was a lot of thought that within two years, this NFC North would be an up for grabs division and the Lions could potentially take it over with the way the rebuild's going if it stays in this trajectory trajectory. Now with Aaron Rodgers back, potentially for four years, it's going to hinder that a little bit, and it's a little disappointing. But I think it does give... In terms of taking over the the division, which expecting that in two or three years for the Lions is absurd. Yeah, but... Even I, get, even with Lions fans getting excited, like, let's, let's calm down. Well, I'm just saying that the way that rebuilds are going these days, we've seen the Dolphins turn around franchises quickly. That goes for certain franchises. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you can say that. But I'm just saying, uh, as far as this new regime... I understand, I understand wanting to hope for that, and yes. it's looking good so far. But I'm saying, if it does go perfectly, it can be within two years. That leaves Aaron Rodgers in the NFC North for another two years after that. That starts to cut it close. That's all I'm saying. Could have been easier for the Lions to take over the division, potentially. And that's that's also hoping the Chicago Bears continue to be a mess. Right. And that Justin Fields doesn't grow into what people think he could be. Yes. And Kirk Cousins stays Kirk Cousins. Good. What are the odds that he stays in Minnesota for the next three, four years? I, I don't see that happening. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. So, a lot of the big-name quarterbacks that we assumed were going to be moving, one has moved, the other did not. As soon as Aaron Rodgers was off the table, the Broncos stepped in, made their move immediately. And then today, another not surprising move, um, but there was rumors for a little bit, and it came out today. Carson Wentz is no longer an Indianapolis Colt. That was that was awfully fast. Don't the, you think the the incredible Carson Wentz era in Indy is over? Yes, he did so much for the city. He is now a Washington Commander. commander. I have to keep phrasing yes. it like that so that I don't forget that they are now the commanders. We're not going to even get into that because I don't care. Anyway, Carson Wentz going to the commanders. Washington fans must be elated about this one. <laughs> I mean, technically it's a good move, but I, I... They took the contract too, But they also which is the rough part. Yeah, but they also... They took all of it. Like, I'm sure a lot of... Fans bought into Taylor Heineke, honestly. I think some fans bought into Taylor yeah, Heineke. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sure they didn't love him, but he showed some signs where he wasn't too bad. At their highest this, level, Carson, Carson Wentz is obviously better, at their high, both of them at their highest levels. Yeah. But, yeah. but at this point, 
I think we know what Carson Wentz is. Mm-hmm. People keep keep trying to hold on to that that one that, run that, that Eagles yeah. season got him to the Super Bowl. Nick Foles won the Super Bowl. It still hurt. It still hurts my heart that he got injured because I loved watching him play that season, and then since then it just ha- it just hasn't been the same. Yeah. So, uh, ultimately, it's a good move for the Commanders. Sounds like they're not going to draft a quarterback now. A lot of people thought they would be in the in the running for drafting one of these quarterbacks in this draft. Doesn't look like that's going to happen anymore. Now, I think the interesting thing that I want to talk about real quick before we get into combine stuff, the Lions have some money for free agency. We know that one of their positions that they're looking at is wide receiver. They're looking for a veteran wide receiver. We've brought up some names, um, and we started this discussion off the podcast just in our little group text. But when Amari uh, Cooper got released uh, by the Cowboys, that just added another free agent wide receiver to the list. Now Devontae Adams has been removed from that list because of Aaron Rodgers coming back. There is a good possibility that the Lions can land one of these better wide receiver guys. And the one that most people are talking about, and we talked about it, is Allen Robinson. He's 28 years old. He's not younger, Malik. <laughs> um, but he would give us a good number one wide receiver, big body. He's from here, which I think that helps a lot. Like when people are from here and they play for this team or they play for a Detroit team, it's easier for them to buy in. So I'm hoping that that's the case. Otherwise, there are guys um, that I've heard people saying, a lot, of, a lot of the other options, I feel like they want to be on in winning situations yeah. instead of rebuilds. Yeah, so so otherwise, like Amari Cooper, no, he, he's not coming here. He wants to be on a contender. Yeah, the reason that I like that Amari Cooper has joined the free agent pool is that it just gives other teams that extra option so that the Lions can get that next, next guy in line. Because for a while, there was a lot of talk of, like, the Lions would maybe get a guy like Christian Kirk. Which I don't he's he's not bad. He's a good number two. Right. And the Lions are expected to draft a wide receiver in the draft at some point. So we don't need we didn't need Devontae Adams as cool as that would have been. But he wouldn't fit into our timeline necessarily. Allen Robinson is a guy that could fit into that timeline because he's twenty eight. If you get him on a three to four year deal, next year you, this year you just ride it out. One more year of riding it out. Next year. C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young, that's that's the goal. And then you slot them in with Allen Robinson, Amon Ross St. Brown, and one of these young receivers that we draft or have drafted previously. And I think you have a good core of wide receivers there. They did re-sign Josh Reynolds, which I think is a solid good re-sign. Move, I like it. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, and I'm just curious of how the Lions are going to spend that money as far as wide receivers go. I I've, hope they don't sell themselves short again. I've heard some people saying they should trade the 32nd pick to Seattle for DK. How much would you like that? Wow. That'd be cool, but, well, I mean, I guess, it, it again, we're riding it out for a year. As if, if DK can ride it out for a year and say, Jared Goff isn't going to be able to throw it deep to you, you're going to have to change your routes for this year, maybe. Detroit would also end up giving him the big bag if he... Yeah. Yeah. But... If there was the choice. At the same time, yes, I would love it. To have a young, even younger, big, huge receiver again, it'd be amazing. So, yeah. I mean, that's a deeper topic that I want to talk about when we get even closer to the draft, but I think the Lions should... This might be the year that the Lions should trade that number two pick. In my opinion. What would you want for that number two pick? More picks? Yeah, just more picks. Uh, I've heard a lot of people start talking about how deep this draft is. Very. It's really like, deep. It's not even that top heavy. There's not like that one guy that you want. Yeah, I, I Honestly, we're going to get to this with the combine and mock draft soon. 
Right. But I'm still debating on whether I think Jordan Davis is really a top 10 pick. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of debate there. Um, I mean, we can move right into that because that was kind of my next spot. Before we got to that, I, I wanted to bring up the thing of Carson Wentz going to Washington. Now that the Commandos have a – I feel like it's just going to be another frustrating and sad year for Washington, honestly. But it could be. It definitely could be. What is Indianapolis going to do at quarterback? It does do – it does give Terry McLaurin his best quarterback that he's ever had. True. True. If that's something. But there there will most likely be some frustrations because he's going to force it and throw, make some turnovers and stuff yes. like that. But I don't think we're going to get a full year of the Sam Ellinger experience in Indianapolis. Yeah. Do you think they end up drafting a QB? I feel like this would point to all the signs that they have to. Yes. Because uh, they've done so much to put together like a playoff roster. I think they still have one. Yeah. So drafting a QB would kind of say we're like, we're not starting over, but we're. Right. What's the what's the what's the term? Not 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 like pausing, not like starting over, but just kind of resetting. Yes, that's a that's a yes. Thank okay. you, sir. Okay. Resetting. Uh, Do you think this would be a kind of a hard reset? I think so. Uh, as much as I don't really like it, at the same time, they could also go after guys like Jimmy G. Jameis Winston. The Mitch Trubisky buzz has been going up yeah. huge. Mitch Trubisky so, is m- a hot yeah. commodity lately. Mitch could be a, an option. Jameis. I thought Jameis, did he just sign a one-year deal with New Orleans? I don't think so. Or, That's what I thought. Yes. He's, yeah, he's coming back to New Orleans. I is assume. he? I don't think he is. Well, he might end up coming back, but I don't know if it actually um, happened. I think he's a free agent still at the moment. But, yeah, it's not set in stone. I think they end up signing him back. Yeah, do, you, do you really want a full season of the other? There's options? a lot of weird quarterback interest, like travesty, like Tampa Bay. They got Blaine Gabbert and Kyle Trask. Right, they, it, They're out in the open saying they hope Tom Brady comes back. Yeah, but yet, like, it sounds like they're going to get Chris Godwin back. Like, they're going to re-sign him and everything. So, that's kind of a surprise to me, too. Yeah, I, Pittsburgh is still on this Mason, Mason Rudolph. Yeah. I, we're, we're not even going to get into that, whatever yeah. that is. He's, he's, a, he's a backup. He's a good backup, I guess. The, they need to stop with this. We're excited to see what Mason can do stuff. Yeah. Because they can't be that stupid. I'm still more – I would still be more excited to see what Dwayne Haskins can do. Uh, do we got to stop this. <laughs> I'm just saying. I think we know what Dwayne Haskins is. I, at this I point. do too, but I'm still more intrigued about Dwayne Haskins than I am Mason Rudolph. Give him some snaps in preseason. So not the regular season. I don't know. Also, Carolina, they don't know what they're doing at Q. They're like you said, there are a bunch of question marks at Car- that position for a lot of teams. Carolina. The whole NFC South is a question mark. <laughs> yeah. Atlanta, New Orleans, oh Carolina. My gosh. You're just making me think of all these things though. Carolina has said that they are shopping offers for Christian McCaffrey. Yes. <laughs> Which I think is insane. Um, Listen, with the in, with the injuries. Let's get Sam Darnold and then trade Christian McCaffrey away. With the injuries. Yeah. And it seems like they're not just going to go away. At this point, would would you just I, consider just sticking with Chuba Hubbard? <laughs> no. Chuba Hubbard. No. You would you really still? Yes, you stick with Christian. Look at the Giants and Saquon Barkley. They've stuck by him. And I think he's shown less. I don't less. think that's going to do <laughs> That's what, I don't think it's going to do anything. I'm just. Christian has done more, and it's and nothing has happened in Carolina. I think it's one of those situations, though, if they trade Christian McCaffrey next year, he goes off, and he's healthy, and he's fine. and then For how long? The whole year. But I'm saying, is it Todd Gurley again, where he's incredible? For like two years, and then he's just gone. That's kind of the risk with running backs in general, though. But exactly, I feel like you That's just have if, to hold if, on. If there's a good chance that can happen, why just hold on for memories and and less wins? Because it can happen to anybody. We've seen it with Dalvin Cook, and then he's come back and had crazy seasons. But if when you're paying a guy that much, why hold on when you can make moves to try and reset? I don't know. I just feel like Carolina's just in a. Constantly restarting. 
I think that's the problem. But yeah, I mean, I get it. And then the other NFC South thing that you made me think of is Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley has been suspended for a whole year off of a gambling, what you're not allowed to do in the NFL and pro sports, basically, in general. He made like $1,500 worth of bets, and he has to sit out the whole season. Yeah. He made a point to tweet out, it was only $1,500. i am not i am not a gambling addict. Yeah. Which I believe him. Yeah. Um, it's a weird situation, and I got into a big <laughs> discrepancy with Marie about this, my fiance. She was not a fan of it because she, she thinks that betting in sports should just be legal. I guess she doesn't. She didn't get the point of why it's a problem or whatever necessarily. I I somewhat side with her. Yeah. Because to me this this whole integrity of the league thing. Yeah. Yeah, when you get down to, to me, it, it is absolute it's a word I can't say, so I'll just say BS. Yeah. This integrity of the league thing and this like holding up the shield like uh, to me this whole illusion needs to disappear. Yeah. Either either tell the truth at all times or just just stop with this. When was the like? How long? There is no integrity in this in this with these owners and these people making decisions. Where is the real integrity ever? Yeah, and the, the, all all they do is defend themselves and right. look out for their own like interests. Yeah, I, I think the weird part too is like it just. I feel like a year is just so much like you could have suspended him for way less it it's stupid to me but why couldn't you suspend him for like three games yeah i don't know what is what is this what is this proving yeah the, what is this proving and then the problem that i have at the end of the day um it, this is where i i actually agree with Stephen a smith at the end of the day you know it's in the rules it was like the smoking weed thing for the longest time of like, you know it's against the rules. You know you can get in big trouble for doing it. So why do you do it? But then you, it's just silly. But then, but it's silly on both sides, like you're saying. Yeah. Like the integrity part of it, that's silly. Breaking the rules when you know that it and talk and like hearing from all the other NFL players and stuff that these rules are plastered all over the place. Don't do, don't gamble, don't bet, don't do this. But that's just silly. Like, why are you doing it? If they just if they just came out and said he broke a rule, and that's it, that would be enough for me. But this this whole trying to make themselves look holy and like right higher than other people in the I, it's it's all it needs to get, it makes my skin it's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's, it's a weird it's a weird scenario. Um, I, I honestly, it's one of those times where I actually I I understand it from both sides. And there needs to be some sort of compromise that they need to to fix there. Because like a lot of people have brought up, the NFL and everything constantly putting up ads for sports betting, DraftKings, FanDuel. It is a full part of pro sports at this point. Yes. Especially the NFL. Making so much money off of it. So, yeah, crazy scenario. Weird to see. We're not going to see Calvin Ridley for a full year. Uh, which is unfortunate. He's one of the best young wide receivers in the league. The Falcons fans just get more bad news. Matt Ryan needs to get out of there. He, he needs to get out of there. Yeah. All they have is Kyle Pitts to look forward to at this point. Yeah. Kyle Pitts could have a big year. They don't got anybody else Cordero to throw to. Patterson? I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's a hybrid everything. Yeah, I know, I know. But, yeah. All right, let's uh, talk about the draft combine for a little bit, and then we'll get into uh, – some conference tournament stuff. So the big news I would say from the draft combine is, well, maybe there's two things. One, Kayvon Thibodeau leaving, not finishing the draft combine, which, of course, always makes people question what's going on. And then offensive linemen just moving up the sp- – not only moving on the field, Moving up the draft boards. Uh, you alluded to it earlier. Jordan Davis. What are you running? Four, seven, eight. He's a defensive lineman, but Oh, defensive lineman. That's right. Um, 
Yeah, he's six six three forty, and he ran a four seven eight forty. Yeah, and he has a thirty two inch vertical and a ten foot broad jump. Yeah, he's so just, he's yeah he's jumped up the the board, and then I guess still on my point, there was a lot of offensive linemen that still ran like four eight four nine forties, and like that's like the fastest offensive line class I think they said they've ever had or something. I like think that. at almost every position besides like. Not, I think only like eight or nine quarterbacks were in the forty. Yeah, there were a bunch that didn't. Which right, every year there's less and less people doing less and less stuff. Mm-hmm. But at almost every position, this is like the fastest class. Right, maybe probably ever. Yeah, you had over ten receivers run under four four. Mm-hmm. You had like three dudes run four twos. It was, it was ridiculous. The yeah. level of speed was just insane. It, even Kenneth Walker surprised me. He was like a 4.38 or something like yeah. that, um, which I know he's fast, but he's, I don't know. He's more of that mixture of speed and power to me, so it was crazy to see that. Um, but then, yeah, I, I do want to round back to Jordan Davis. They showed the stat that he ran a faster 40 time than Patrick Mahomes, and he's probably twice – Patrick Mahomes' size. Yeah. What do they say? Is three seventy eight, three hundred seventy eight pounds? I thought he was like three forty something. Three forty something. Yeah. Either way, he's a big dude running very fast. Um. Uh, so his draft stock has moved up a lot, which is a little skeptical. Um, because like a lot of people have pointed out, athleticism is a big part of the game, but when you're a lineman, either side. There's a lot of footwork involved. There's a lot of knowledge that plays into it. I don't know. What What are your thoughts on it? Drafting a defensive tackle top 10 is insanely risky because if it's not an Aaron Donald level, generational game-breaking type player, mm-hmm. you're usually you're mostly getting a run stopper and a dude that's going to get like seven, eight sacks at the most maybe, mm-hmm. and that's not worth a top 10 pick. Right. That's why defensive ends are more worth it for those picks because those are the guys that can get you in the teens and close to the 20s in sacks. Right. But outside of that, there's only really a few things that stood out to me in the combine. Like everybody for a little bit was buzzing about Kenny Pickett having eight and a half <clears throat> size hands, which is, I think, was like the smallest in combine history. Mm-hmm. But then he started throwing, and obviously, you, you watch the tape of him at Pittsburgh. He can make every throw. It really doesn't matter. Right. Although it, it matters with fumbles, but he's been playing this long. I'm sure he'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. Desmond Ritter ran a four four nine. That's raising him up boards, even though I, I think he's a second-round pick at best. Right. Carson Strong and, Mal- and Malik Willis have huge arms. Mm-hmm. We already knew this, but they still wowed the crowd at the combine. Right. Throwing like 70-yard go-routes. Mm-hmm. The Malik Willis hype is, uh, I'm telling you, it's it's starting to happen. Yeah, it'll get it'll keep it's going. It's getting out of control. It'll it'll keep going. The good news is that could help the Lions. Because if he just keeps moving up and he gets into that top ten, there are teams that want quarterbacks. Teams that need quarterbacks. The Lions need to stay away. Yeah, I I feel like this Malik Willis thing is overcompensating for how people missed on Lamar Jackson. Yeah. I think so too. Because I think prospect to prospect. It's not close. Lamar is a different level yeah. of athlete and player. What he did at Louisville, like, he had them on the brink of possibly making the playoff one year. Right. Like, they almost beat Clemson. Mm-hmm. They were destroying Florida State. Like, Lamar had that school at a very high level, and he was doing incredible things. Right. Malik Willis has had two really good seasons, mm-hmm. both at Liberty. Couldn't start at Auburn. He has athleticism and he has a huge arm, but I people need to pump the brakes, but they're not going to, yeah. Because the hype on quarterbacks always gets like this, right? The one thing I would say, I think Malik Willis, he's closer to Michael Vick than Lamar is. So I think. What do you mean when you say that? Like he's athletic and he's got a big arm. That's kind of what Michael Vick was. And like, I mean, that's what Lamar was. Yeah, but I, I. And he's faster than Malik Willis. I just feel like Lamar is such a different breed, 
and people are now trying to like well that to me that's why he's he's closer to michael vick because right mike vick still is probably the best athlete to ever play quarterback lamar is like a close second hmm. i don't think malik willis is in their league yeah he's still a really good athlete though right so yeah it's interesting we'll have to see um the other interesting thing is that um, there was some talk for a while that the Jaguars were uh, looking at offensive line for their first pick. They franchise tagged, what's his name, Cam, Cam Robinson. Robinson. Yeah. So a lot of people are now thinking that they're going back to possibly Aiden Hutchinson for their first overall pick. Maybe Thibodeau if they figure that situation out. So that's interesting for the Lions moving forward. Um, anybody else that really impressed you or anything from the combine? The wide receivers looked pretty good. Baylor had two guys run four two, yeah, which is absolutely absurd. Mm-hmm. Knowing that, like, they're not Texas, but they still managed to get these high high level athletes, mm-hmm. and they've been a better football program than Texas. Right. Over the past decade, which is wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kalen Graves or Barnes. I think it's Kalen Barnes. He ran the second fastest 40 in combine history at a 4-2-3. He was a good corner in college. I don't know how much the speed is actually going to help him playing yeah. corner in the NFL. But he's rising up draft boards because that's ridiculously fast. Right. And then receiver Tyquan Thornton ran a 4-2-8. Mm-hmm. Just two high-level burners, both out of Baylor. Yep. Oh, the one I wanted to bring up was Sauce Gardner. Yeah. He ran like he ran four four something. Yeah, four four as a six three corner. Yeah, like the the the, level of, the level of speed overall was. Just I'm stupid. not gonna lie, I wouldn't mind the Lions trading back and drafting Gardner. As much as I'm sure they would hate drafting a corner, but you close to out on Jeff Okuda. You you can't be in on Jeff Okuda if you if you have that opinion. I'm not in on Jeff Okuda. Okay. <laughs> I've been out on him. I, I can't remember you giving this opinion. I can't remember no. you saying you were out on him. No, I'm out on him, unfortunately. But, yeah, just weird. Okay. We'll have to talk more drafts when we get closer, when we get more mock stuff going. But there's a big Shouts tournament. out to the Michigan guys in the combine. Ojabo ran 445. Hassan Haskins. I think he had like 28 reps on the bench. Hmm. They all look good. But we have a big tournament coming up. It's uh, probably my favorite time of the year. Probably? And probably. Or definitely? Almost definitely. Okay. <laughs> uh, but NCAA tournament is right around the corner. Like I said, next week we're going to have our big tournament special. Two hour long. Me and Malik. We're going to get Sammy back in. Chris is going to join us via Zoom. And Loyola Chicago is back in the tournament. They're back. <laughs> so Sister we, Jean returns. We are still a Loyola Chicago podcast. She's back for the third movie. Yes. But we've had some conference tournaments going on leading up to that. So we're going to talk about those really quick. Some of the small ones just because there was some exciting news. And then we'll get into a Big Ten preview tournament. Tournament preview. Uh, so we can get ready for that this weekend. Uh, So, real quick, the automatic bids that have already happened over this past weekend. For the Atlantic Sun Conference, kind of a weird one. Jacksonville State is in the tournament. But that is because Bellarmine Bellarmine. is not eligible. This makes me so upset. Yeah. I didn't know that until reading this article. For people that don't know, it's only Bellarmine's second year playing Division I basketball. And they need four years to be eligible for the tournament. What a ridiculous rule. It's crazy. So, you win the conference tournament, you should be able to play. I don't know. Why should they have to wait? Yeah. So now the regular season conference winner, Jacksonville State, they are going to the big dance. Unfortunate, but oh well. Hey, good. It's, it's, a, it's still a conference tournament win for Bellarmine. Right. They, they'll remember that one forever. It means a lot. Yes. Hang a banner. The Big South, Longwood won their first Big South yeah. tournament by beating Winthrop, which we've seen Winthrop in tournament in the past. So, solid team. Cool to see a new team into the tournament. Um, the 
the Colonial Conference ended last night, I believe it was. Delaware beat uh, UNC Wilmington, another team that we've seen in the tournament in uh, previous years. Before we started this, I said I'm starting to feel old because the starting point guard for Delaware is a name people might remember. Yep. Former star for St. Joseph's in the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Jameer Nelson Jr. Yes. Wow. Crazy. You feel old, Joey? A little bit, but I felt old for a while. You're just catching up. <laughs> the Horizon League champion, Wright yes. State. The team that beat Oakland. They are in the tournament. Took their rightful spot. Congratulations. And here we go. Missouri Valley, Loyola, Chicago. This was actually a big win for them yeah. because they had to knock off Drake, who Drake beat them both times in the regular season. So shout out to Loyola, Chicago for getting it done in the conference tournament. Yeah. Shouts out Drew Valentine. First year as head coach. Yep. And Brayden Norris, you made it out of Oakland. You beat the curse. Yep. And you're. this is the second time in the tournament. Yeah. I'm happy for him. And there's still going to be a team that you got to be a little bit scared of yeah. going into the tournament. In the Northeast, Bryant has won, even though uh, there was a little bit of a brawl at the, at the conference yeah. final. I didn't know they had the leading scorer in the country until I watched that game yesterday. Peter Me Kiss. Me neither. Me neither. Heck of a name, Peter Kiss. Yes. He averaged almost 25 this year. Mm-hmm. I watched him. He's just a bucket getter. Yeah. And they, they blew out Wagner in that yeah. final. So they should be fun to watch. Uh, in the Ohio Valley Conference, we have Murray State coming back. They won their tournament, which is cool. We haven't seen them since 2019 with Ja. I think, I think they went undefeated in the league this year. They, they they basically, like, dominated the entire year in conference. Yeah. They either, like they either lost, like, one game or they went undefeated. But they, uh, they're a high-level team. Yeah. In the Southern Conference, this was crazy. I watched the end of this game. Chattanooga. Yeah. It looked like it was over. Won in overtime at the buzzer against Furman. And it was, like, a logo three. It was, it was right past half court on the left side. Over two guys. Yes. Almost all in that. If nobody has seen it, just look it up. Chattanooga versus Furman. Yeah. It's March. You, if you have the ESPN app or you are following like, sports things on Twitter, you should have seen the clip at least once. Yes. Uh, Summit League, South Dakota State beating North Dakota State. South Dakota State is going to be one that I'm going to talk about probably next week. But uh, they shot 45% from the three this season. Ridiculous. And they shoot a lot of threes. I saw they played Oral Roberts a few weeks ago. Yeah. Oral Roberts is the team that made the Sweet 16 run last year with Max Acemas. Mm-hmm. The game ended like 107 to like 105 in like double overtime. Yeah. And it was just insane shooting back and forth the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, in the Sun Belt, Georgia State, they're back. This is their fourth time since 2015. Uh, just a solidly coached team. They'll be back. And the West Coast, Gonzaga knocked off St. Mary's. St. Yeah. Mary's didn't get to knock off Gonzaga twice in a season. So Gonzaga Gonzaga's pretty much. most likely going to, they're going to be a one seed. Will they get the overall in one number one Yeah, seed? they they may have locked up the actual one seed. Yeah. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see. So now we got ACC tournament going on. Syracuse SEC stuff. destroyed Florida State earlier. Yeah, so a lot of these tournaments going on. But we don't have a ton of time to talk about all these conference tournaments. It's just it's March Madness. It's crazy. So we're going to talk about the Big Ten tournament. That is starting today. And it is going to be really interesting. Looking at the bracket, it's just, I mean, it's kind of what we thought it would be. Um, absolute craziness. We have um, tonight, it is Nebraska playing Northwestern. And then Penn State playing Minnesota. Which, man, both these, well, all these teams are. Earlier this week, you were telling me how Nebraska true, could be dangerous. True, they can be dangerous in this tournament, but they could also get blown out in this game. That's the type of team Nebraska yeah, is. Yeah, Nebraska all of a sudden has been knocking off people left and right. They knocked off Ohio State. Um, just coming out of nowhere, they looked awful all year, and then down the stretch, they've actually yeah. had some some nice games put together. So Nebraska could cause some problems, um, but we'll have to wait and see. Then Minnesota, Penn State. Actually, I like Penn State. I like where they're going in the future. Yeah. Very, very average team this year, but the recruiting is getting better. I like Micah Shrewsbury. Mm-hmm. I hope they win this game, honestly. I 
think they should. Minnesota has been pretty awful. They started the season hot. They won. They started like eight and zero. Yeah, or seven and zero, and then it just yeah. Most mm-hmm. conference play started, even though they beat Michigan at Michigan. Now that that loss still hurts me that that happened. Yeah. And then tomorrow, we get to the nitty gritty. Yeah. Bright and early, eleven thirty a.m. Juwan is back. Juwan Howard is back, and they're playing Indiana. Yeah. Must win. Listen, I, we we didn't even bring up the how they finished the season. That's true. So we haven't had time. Yeah. <laughs> so Michigan, um, they needed some wins. They did what they to needed get into to get into the tournament. They beat Michigan State. They came back home and got blitzed by Iowa. Mm-hmm. Keegan Murray and his twin brother Chris both went crazy, along with Jordan Bohannon hitting logo threes. Mm-hmm. They went to Ohio State about 10 minutes before the game. They announced Hunter Dickinson wasn't playing because of a stomach issue. Yep. It looked bad. And then the game started. They were competitive to start. Mm-hmm. Ohio State took a bit. It took some took control near the end of the first half. I figured it was over. And then Michigan went on a 26-6 to run to start the second half. Mm-hmm. And they basically controlled it from that point. Yep. And they beat Michigan. I mean, they beat Ohio State on the road to end the season. Yeah. Kind of like the end of the football season. They Beautiful. closed They closed out how they needed to. Yeah. Devontae Jones is playing the best ball of his season yes. so far. He, he's playing very good for them and right Terrence now. Terrence Williams played great, too. But they are still on the edge. I, I think yeah. they, they need to win this game against Indiana. If they lose, it's going to be really tough to get in. Real rocky. Really tough. Um, and then, um, the winner of Nebraska Northwestern, they will play Iowa. Iowa, I would assume will win that game. If Nebraska makes it through, maybe there's a chance Nebraska pulls it off. And then later in the afternoon, we got Maryland and Michigan state. You want to talk about how they finished the season? (sighs) No, (laughs) they didn't play very well. Well, they finished with a win, but the two of the last three, they didn't look very good. Yeah. Um, Marcus Bingham has been one of their better scorers, if that tells you anything about the team. And Maryland is one of those teams that they split the season series, I believe. Uh, they, um, did Michigan, did Maryland beat them? I can't remember if Maryland beat them. I'm I thought it was back. close. Uh, <clears throat> Michigan, Maryland. Maryland. No, they beat them the first time. By two at Maryland. Yeah. Okay. So Maryland has played them close. Okay. So, yeah. Um, still a scary game in my eyes, unfortunately. Uh, it, I mean, crazy enough, it looks like Michigan State is locked in to the tournament at the moment. They'll, they'll be like a 8-9 seed probably. Yeah, depending on what they do in this tournament. Um, but this, this tournament is more important for them just to the fact that they need something to go into the big dance for. Because if they lose against Maryland, they're going to have no steam heading into the big tournament. Um, Ohio State is going to play Minnesota or Penn State, which we assume is going to be Penn State. Ohio State's been really weird. They've been all over the map. Lost two of their last three. Yep. Like I said, dropped to Nebraska. EJ Liddell has still been playing insanely well. So they have that going for them. Um, and then on Friday, if Michigan is able to win, they will have to face off against number one seed Illinois. Well, I thought Wisconsin would be the one seed. Nope. Illinois because uh, Wisconsin lost to Nebraska. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, yeah. that's where it was. I was trying to remember who the other team Nebraska beat. But it was Wisconsin. That's that's how crazy the Big Ten has been. And so Michigan's going to have to play Illinois again. If they beat Indiana. <laughs> if they beat yeah. Indiana, yes. Um, now, at that point, they may have solidified themselves in the tournament, depending on how well they play against Illinois. But that's crazy. That could be a huge game. If they somehow pull off the upset and get it get around Illinois, then they're locked into the tournament, I would assume. Um, and then... Iowa or Nebraska, who we assume, 
will have to play Rutgers. They got the four seed, which is crazy to think about. And then the winner of Maryland, Michigan State, they got to play Wisconsin, which is terrifying. And then the winner of Ohio State, potentially Penn State, they got to play against Purdue. Who do you think is going to win the Big Ten tournament? Do you still think it's Illinois? You were saying Illinois before, right? I'm going to go with either Illinois or Iowa. Okay. I feel like when Keegan Murray and Jordan Bohannon are both on, they're impossible to stop. But the last, like, they they had a stretch at the end of the season where, for the most part, most games they were unstoppable. They almost beat Illinois at Illinois to end the season. They smacked Michigan. Michigan made a small comeback near the end, but they still won by 11. Mm-hmm. Blew out Northwestern, put 88 on Nebraska, 86 on Michigan State, 75 on Ohio State. Like, they are putting up serious points. Mm-hmm. And they've been red hot lately, and they have the scores to punt to take big punches at anybody. Mm-hmm. And if you can't consistently punch back, Iowa's going to run you over. So I think they have a good chance in this tournament, but I'm I'm going to go with Illinois because they they just look like the strongest team right now and the most trustworthy team. Purdue could do it, but we don't know what team we're going to get game to game. Right. And some people think Michigan State could also do it, but I I just don't. I don't see it. Yeah, I'm not a believer. I, I think the, I I just I still don't believe in Wisconsin. I just don't. See, Even with I, them winning the regular season title, I just don't. Yeah, I have more faith in Wisconsin, but that loss to Nebraska definitely threw me off. I think the potential is Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin, Purdue. I don't know if I don't think Rutgers has a chance. I think Rutgers has as weird the, as they uh, are. In terms of, of a surprise team, Rutgers would be my surprise team. Yeah, because, but then yeah, they 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 just play good team basketball on both ends of the court. And the other thing, I have this weird feeling about Ohio State. Like if you look at their side of the bracket, Purdue's been kind of weird. I mean, Ohio State has been weird themselves, yeah. but like, then you can play Wisconsin, like. There's a chance. I don't know. If Ohio State gets hot, they could get to the championship. So, Possible. but again, I don't trust them that much, though. I I don't know if I do either, but I I could see it. There, the Big Ten, anything can basically happen. It feels like it's kind of crazy. It's going to be really fun to watch. I'm excited for it. Um, I think I'm still going to go with Wisconsin for some reason. They got some weird thing going that I feel like they're going to win, but we'll have to wait and see. Um. One final thing that we forgot to mention, um, Coach K finished off his historic career at Duke over the weekend against North Carolina, where only the elite of the elite were allowed to get in because the prices of tickets were just, like... Just seeing the pregame, all the players, all the greats lined up on the court yeah. before the game. To see guys like Grant Hill, J.J. Reddick, Shane Battier, Christian Leitner... All these guys. Your favorite piston, Kyle Singler, was Stop there. Stop it. I was I specifically avoiding. <laughs> he was there, yeah. and he's bald now, which he's got, is he got look, a good it looks amount pretty of weird. FaceTime. My least favorite player, Sheldon Williams, was there. <laughs> Forgot about Sheldon Williams. <laughs> I, I'm happy you did. <laughs> Woo. That's a throwback. Yeah, he was there with JJ. He, that was, makes, he was really good at That makes me feel there. old. Wasn't he like a, a number two overall pick? Yes. One of the worst picks ever. Drafted by Atlanta the Hawks. Hawks. Yep. Just terrible. Just, yeah. Oh, well, you know, it happens. So his final game, and he lost to North Carolina, the rival. Yeah. That's rough. Hubert Davis, he coached close to a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Because North Carolina was in control for a good portion of the game. Yeah. And they just wouldn't let up. Yep. That's a good thing for North Carolina heading into the uh, conference tournaments. And um, Duke's going to have a lot of work to do um, heading into this big tournament. That's all the time that we have for today. Like I said, next week is the big one. We're going to have our friends in. We're going to do some uh, discussions on the tournament. We're going to make our picks. We're going to make our bracket. We're going to put it up. It's going to be big. It's going to be fun. I'm excited. We'll see you guys next week. March Madness has begun. I just have a feeling you and Chris are going to both decide, or all of you except me are going to decide on what y'all are you know Chris is all in on the Sister uh, Jean yeah. Miracle Train. Him and Sam. Uh, 
We'll bring them down. Listen, I'm just happy Oakland isn't there. Save the embarrassment. Losers. <laughs>